that is audio, but, but just this works better. This sure. will be better. <clears throat> Let me get an intro real quick. Your name, your last name is what? Wilson. Wilson. Okay. Hi, my name is Jeremy Shines, and this is an episode of Community Conversations. Today, my guest is Scott Wilson. Scott, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> well, uh, go ahead, Scott. Tell us a little bit about yourself and what brings you out in Battle Mountain. Oh, golly. I started coming here in 03. I'm a pilot. I go to Oshkosh every year, which is the Experimental Aircraft Association. You're a pilot pilot. Like a pilot yeah. for... Yeah, just uh, private planes. Okay. So I go to these forums in Oshkosh. Oshkosh has like over a thousand forums in the course of a week. Mm -hmm. There are three quarters of a million people there. It's one of the biggest aviation events. It is the biggest aviation event in the world. And I'm sitting in the forum and I'm thinking, gosh, you know, if I made my bike more streamlined, I bet I could go a lot faster. And I said, ah, I'm sure somebody's done it. So I went online, uh -huh. checked it out. Sure enough... And I found this event, so I thought, well, I'll come here and see if it's practical. Mm -hmm. Are these bikes practical? Well, these bikes are launched by hand. Somebody has to, somebody outside the vehicle helps it get started, almost all of them, and somebody catches it at the other end. Mm -hmm. The person is taped in, so the, the vehicle is sealed. They can, they could get out if they crashed, because it would probably undo some of the tape and stuff, but it's not an everyday vehicle these are purpose built to set world records and this is the venue that people come to from around the world to set these records so we've got people from multiple continents here today and today running to set records there's more people coming or they're all already here well a um, couple people from egypt just showed up they, they're just here to volunteer mm -hmm. they they're talking about building a bike but they haven't built it yet um, but they were they, they just appeared at the end of the meeting. Uh -huh. um, I'm from the D.C. area. I live in Maryland, but I'm inside the D.C. Beltway. Mm. Um, the people I had lunch with are from California coast, mm. England, mm. Canada, mm -hmm. and Holland. And they are running the event. Um, by and large. When I say running, everybody here is volunteering. Huge numbers of people here are volunteering. Mm. Um, so I've been coming here every year since 03. <laughs> wow. Just to volunteer. I've thought about building a bike, but I've never done it. They build the bikes here? Or no, no, no. They, no, they build them and, and, okay. and then okay. they ship them here. Oh, and that okay. can be a challenge. Uh, the Japanese had some trouble shipping their bike this year and uh, they, even though they were here last year and um, I, I guess it must be some different people or certainly the person involved with shipping was different hmm. but there was somebody who could help them and they got it here and everything's fine hmm. um, but there are some people carry them on the plane as luggage how? they put they're, they're, there's a group that came from uh, Scandinavia for many years and they had a pouch with two handles, and it literally was a suitcase. But <laughs> the pouch was a, just a fabric pouch. That it helped protect the surface of the bike because you want it nice and smooth and slippery because it's all about aerodynamic drag. Uh -huh. But uh, And most of these vehicles are, after the run, they carry them off the course because they don't want to get anything to flatten the tires or anything. So they're all set up to be carried by two people or less. Huh. Um, and, but they, these guys, you know, they, they found an airline where they could ship it as luggage, and they flew that airline. And I know uh, they're not alone. Others, mm -hmm. others ship it, mm -hmm. ship their bikes as luggage too. So this is my first time experiencing this. So did you get on the course this morning? I did not. There are bleachers. You know, you know, we run on Nevada 305. I we close. That, yeah. We close a six-mile stretch, like a construction zone, uh -huh. with flaggers at each end. Uh -huh. And in 20 minutes, we run uh, four or five bikes through. Then we open it back up, let the traffic go, 
close it, run four or five bikes through, open, let the traffic go. Really? So how long is, are these increments? In the morning, we have, I think, a three-hour slot. In the evening, I think it's about a hour and a half slot. We want to run around dawn and dusk because the runs aren't legal for world records unless the wind is below three and a half uh, kilometers per hour or something like that. It's a low speed. Like tonight, the wind the forecast is supposed to be 12 to 15. We may not even run because it's just too much wind. But uh, and, and all that rain we got last night has really made mud, and mud's a problem because these bikes have about this much clearance, mm-hmm. you know, half an inch, three quarters of an inch, mm-hmm. and that's not just from the ground, but it's also around the wheel in the in the shell. Mm-hmm. There's almost no steering in these vehicles. That's why they have to be launched and caught. You got to get up to a speed where you could balance without turning the wheel hardly at all. So they're going for are they going for time or are they going speed. for speed? They're going speed. For speed. Okay. They have five miles to accelerate, and then there's a 200 meter trap where they're timed automatically, mm-hmm. and then they have a mile to slow down. Dang. And we had people blasting through this morning who weren't slowed down yet. A lot of these bikes are camera bikes, and they haven't ridden them at full speed because. First of all, at higher altitude, there's less air, so you can go faster. Uh-huh. But also, uh, there are not places where you have a six-mile run-up. People can't practice. Uh-huh. I, 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 the, the bike from Liverpool had a total of 200 meters on it. <laughs> That's all it had ridden. And, and it didn't finish the course today. Uh-huh. Something went wrong. But they'll work on it. And, and you know, if you look in here now, there are people working on it, all these vehicles, all uh-huh. the time. And they will that do that all week. Um, Let me get her real quick. Sure. I'm still going to record it. I'll just uh, cut it. Oh, no, you just want some milk. You just want some milk. <sighs> Part of, yeah. <laughs> so, I, you know, it, it, a lot of interesting stuff goes on here. How do you get into something like this? Like, if you don't well, know nothing you how, about I it. I told you how I got into it. Right. Um, people, as the word gets out, more people come and check on. The International Human Powered Vehicle Association mm-hmm. runs this event. Mm-hmm. It was founded by people like uh, Paul McCready, who built the Gossamer Condor, the first plane to fly human powered and win the Kramer Prize to mm-hmm. fly in a figure eight. It's in the Smithsonian. Mm-hmm. Uh, the guy who holds the world record right now set it here mm-hmm. twice. Mm-hmm. And he is six miles an hour faster than anybody else, which is unbelievably fast. How? How? <laughs> Combination of events. Todd Reichert, who is here as a volunteer now, and, and his wife as a... They have a child about the same age as your little one. Uh-huh. Um, he is very strong. He can put out more than horsepower for more than a minute. They're pedaling. And a horsepower is 770 watts, and he's 165 pounds. So he's putting out mega power. So that's one thing. Mm-hmm. A lot of these athletes are really good athletes. Mm-hmm. But, for instance, uh, I used to crew for, with a guy from uh, Slovenia. Mm-hmm. He brought a professional rider to ride his bike because he wanted somebody who could put out the power. They, they broke the European record. This was in 03, mm-hmm. first year I came. They broke the European record on Wednesday, but we were only running at night at that time, and he was using a GPS for his speedometer, and he couldn't really see it. So he thought he had slowed down from 65-plus mm-hmm. to zero. He had only slowed down to, like, 35 so he blew through where we catch them and a couple hundred yards away you got these cars parked well one of the guys that i came with that year was a young student and he took off running when he saw how fast he was coming and he mm-hmm. caught him next to the second car in that line 200 yards away which i can't believe he got there i don't know how he did it how fast were 
Because when you blew by us, it's probably 35 miles an hour. Oh, my God. So his average speed from there to there was, was 17. 17 is faster than most people can run. So, But he was already down course when he mm-hmm. saw that it was going to happen. Mm-hmm. So, But he took off. I'm sure he ran full speed, and he just barely caught him. So how did – they don't have brakes on them? They do, but the guy didn't know to brake, and that's, that's kind of the point. Uh-huh. A lot of these are camera bikes now, and with the camera, you're seeing a two-dimensional yeah. image, yeah. and you don't really – get the full depth of field you need to know where you are on the course mm. where, where you should be braking mm. we had a gal today who was oh okay, it was her, okay, okay. It was her first yeah. run uh-huh. she came in really fast and uh, you know she went down and she when they go down they slide and spin uh-huh. generally on their side well she took out two of her her people that knocked, happened knocked, this morning knocked them over yeah they were they're okay, but one's going to have a pretty good bruise, I think. And they, they, a couple of them were pretty upset. The gal who was in the bike and the gal who got hit first, they were both really upset. Mm-hmm. It's interesting. We have a lot of women riders now because the women's record is only seventy five, the men's record is eighty nine point five nine. The the men's record is not likely to fall. Uh, you've got to have special aerodynamics. I want to talk to Todd about that later today, but. They built. They they spent six hours running their bike on a, a oval mm. in Ohio. They're from the University of Toronto. Mm. They rented this track for six hours, and it, when you check aerodynamics for planes or bikes, mm. you put little tufts of yarn on them, mm. tape them on, and then you see if the yarn blows nice and straight, or if it t- turns around backwards, or what it does. And that tells you which way the air is blowing. Mm. Well, they did that on the inside and the outside of the bike. Mm. And what they found was that the wheels were air pumps that pumped a whole bunch of air. So all these bikes look super smooth like a bullet kind of on the outside. Mm. But they've got these wheels that are creating this dam of air, which nobody really understood until they did this tough testing. Mm. And they worked and they worked and they figured out how to take that pump Mm. and channel the air where they wanted it to go. Mm. And... I, I want to talk to him more about it. I, I talked to the designer. Um, he and he, Todd and Cam um, Robertson were the, the builder, the main two people uh, writing and designing. And um, Cam told me that's what they had learned from their uh, test track experience. But it was like a, a much shorter conversation than you and I are having right now, so I didn't get the full gist of it. But mm. it, it had to be major major significance because they had been bringing bikes here for six or seven years Mm. before they broke the record Mm. the fastest they had gone was in the high 70s Mm. the record was 83 they went 86 now drag increases geometrically so if you double your speed you quadruple your drag Mm. so to get six to three I came here from 03 so the year they broke the record, which was like 15-ish, I think, and the record went up two and a half miles an hour. And they broke it by three, but they didn't break their own record by three. They broke their own record by eight. Mm. So they learned some serious stuff aerodynamically. And then they came back the next year and broke it by three more. So now they're six miles an hour faster than any other bike ever, which is... What team is this? It's uh, Aero Velo was the name of it. The guys that went to the University of Toronto, mm-hmm. and after they graduated, they made this Aero Velo team. They also built a human-powered helicopter, which won a quarter million dollars Sikorsky prize. And that's where he had to, that's where he tested his one minute of, because it was, to win the quarter million, they had to climb to an altitude with a human-powered helicopter, climb to an altitude of three meters, 10 feet. They had to stay within a 10 by 10 meter box mm. and they had to fly for a minute. That's all they had to do. They were the fourth helicopter to fly. The first one flew back in the late 70s or early 80s. You're, you're saying helicopter like a helicopter? Like a helicopter? Well, okay. The first one that flew was a standard form helicopter uh-huh. one blade, uh-huh. one tail rotor. Uh-huh. Tail rotors are inefficient because uh-huh. they're just keeping the, the whole body from spinning, uh-huh. but they're not providing any lift. Uh-huh. 
Mm -hmm. So the Japanese in 92 built a quadcopter, and these things can only be flown inside. Mm -hmm. When I was with the University of Maryland group, I I didn't go to Maryland, but I helped Mm -hmm. when they tested it and stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, And they turned off the air conditioning in their field house because it was too windy. (laughs) <laughs> to fly the helicopter in the field house. <laughs> so that gives you an idea of the conditions that the people are looking for. They only flew them inside. And uh, Maryland's, the, the one they flew in the field house was 85 by 85 feet, mm-hmm. quadcopter. Then they built a 100 by 100 foot. Mm-hmm. And uh, once they put a flywheel on it, they could actually fly it. So they, they set a bunch of world records. Yeah, go ahead. Mm-hmm. She's a. Uh, let me see the mama. I know. Yeah, she's eating. Just keeps kind of knocking the, knocking it out. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit. So Marilyn set a bunch of world records. Well, the Aerovelo helicopter was 121 feet square so for and the thing weighed like 100 pounds they mm-hmm. flew a, they flew a 100 pound flapping wing aircraft as well and each mm-hmm. flap of the wings used was a 700 pound thrust on a legs only rowing machine mm-hmm. in, in, inside the cockpit so he's got to do 700 pounds of thrust to flap the wings for each flap of the wings. Mm-hmm. He did 12 flaps and, and then he landed um, in like 17 seconds. So it was like the Wright Brothers' first flight, you know, just a real short. And they actually towed it up to altitude and then he just maintained speed and altitude. So a lot of people say he just, it was the glider, he didn't really fly it. But, mm-hmm. but I tell you, it brings tears to your eyes. Go to Snowbird. Look up Snowbird on the- uh, Where's that at? On the internet. Yeah, that was Toronto. Toronto? And okay. that was while he was still a student. They've been working on flapping wing aircraft in Toronto for like 15 years, mm-hmm. and they had they had built a mechanical flapping wing aircraft, but they had never built a human powered. So th- this, these guys built this human powered. You're saying flapping, wing flapping like not propeller like flapping. like flap flapping. Do they look at the video, Snowbird? It's on. It brings tears to my eyes. Do they? Is it moving it's, or is it stationary going up? It's it, well. What they did was they they used the car, towed it up to ten feet, fifteen miles an hour, like a glider, and then he started flapping, and the flaps maintained the ten speed, ten uh, feet and fifteen miles an hour mm. for a, a distance covered in seventeen seconds. So mm. you know they were doing it on a runway. And they were doing it in real cold weather when it, the air is real dense because you get more lift from dense air. You get more. See, dense air is good for lifting. It's bad for drag because it creates you know, all this drag. So we we would set our land speed records up here where the, the air is thinner, uh-huh. um, higher altitude. And they're they're designated as a high altitude record, not a. It's not the. You know, there's a low altitude record too, which is slower. Uh-huh. So there's all kinds of different sports in the aerodynamics. Well, the yeah. International Human Powered Vehicle Association runs the world human powered speed. Human shot. power, okay. And so we're the record keeping body internationally. IHPVA is the record keeping body internationally for land speed, air speed, uh, sea speed, you know, air, land, sea records. Human, human powered records. All, it's, all human powered records. It's not just the competition, is it? Is it play into our, uh, like, benefiting humanity in well, some way. I'll tell you what. What I've learned, and this is already pretty well known in Europe, you don't need a car with gas. Mm. You don't need a car with an engine. If you have... The average human can put out 75 watts continuous. Mm-hmm. A streamliner to go 22 knots which is about 23 to 24 miles an hour. Mm-hmm. Actually, it's more like 25 miles an hour. Um, needs 22 watts. 
So if you wanted to ride around town, and, and they what's a- twenty two watts in comparison, like doing this? Well, well, let's put it this way: the average person could put out seventy five continuous, mm. continuous all day, all day. And um, what it, what like action continuous would that is, means a long time. I don't know if it's all day, but what action would that kind of? It's pedaling. Just pedaling. Okay. Yeah, just pedaling. Okay. You, you know, I mean, you can put it on any way you want, but mm. the average person can pedal at a seventy five watt uh, power output continuously mm-hmm. and so if you build a vehicle that is this fast mm-hmm. you can go with 22 watts you can go 22 about 25 miles an hour so the average person if you figure that the, the lift uh, I mean the um, the drag is the cube of the speed mm-hmm. um, the cube of 22 is, I, I mean the uh, um, 22 would become 88. You love math. And uh, so you should be able to go about 44. The average person should be able to go somewhere okay. around 40 okay. miles an hour uh-huh. um, continuously mm-hmm. on level ground, you know, mm-hmm. obviously, with okay. hills and so forth. So you might want to add a little electric assist for hills. But it's there's no need to have cars mm-hmm. for, for almost... I mean, incredible amounts of travel. They got this one here today. There's five riders in it. They went 52 miles an hour this morning, and they and they weren't pushing, they, and they only went. They were on a two and a half mile course, so they only accelerated for like two and a half miles, mm. and they got to 52 miles an hour. Mm. So, um, I'm not it's, saying it's a practical vehicle by any stretch of the imagination to get five guys in a row in a in a tube. It's, uh, Five guys in a tube, not side by side. No, in a tube. All not, lengthwise. Not a double, not a lengthwise. double, stro- nope, nope. double stroller. Single, <laughs> single. It, and I, 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 you know, there's a lot of extra drag with all that surface area. Mm. Um, it'll be interesting to see how fast they can go. They are, they, you look at those guys, they're some muscular guys. Mm. Uh, but they're not, the vehicle itself weighs like 800 and some pounds. And they got another thousand pounds of people. That's about what you'd have in a compact car, right? You know. Right. So, but I, I started to say the American Society of Mechanical Engineers (ASME) uh-huh. actually runs a competition, two or three competitions around the world every year for a practical bike. And what they do is they you got to carry groceries, you got to go over speed humps, you got to. There's a speed component in the competition. Uh, there's an endurance type of, uh, uh, you know, there's a sprint and there's a longer run. Uh, they're different competitions. Mm. But the bottom line is they build a vehicle that is for everyday use. Mm. And they do this every year in a lot of these schools. Mm. And in Europe, they have what are called velomobiles. Mm. They're three wheels mostly. And they're... Um, Human powered only, mm-hmm. uh, or human electric, because electric is so easy to do now. Mm-hmm. Uh, and people use them as their mo- main transport. I, I ride a bike as my main transportation. Mm-hmm. The only time I insure my car is in the summertime when I'm going hundreds and hundreds of miles. And I've thought about riding my bike the hundreds of miles. Mm-hmm. That's one of the reasons I was I looked into building this aerodynamic vehicle because mm-hmm. you know you don't really you don't really need. A car. Yeah. Um, Any last things that you want to say, real quick? We're about done with our time here. Yeah. I don't know. I know. I, no, you're, you're we, saying we've got, great we got, things. We got way off. Yeah. You know, into no, you're, other you're, other worlds. You're good. But uh, it's a. Uh, we're very fortunate that you have this place mm-hmm. where you can close a public road mm-hmm. that's level and flat and straight, mm-hmm. that's super smooth, mm-hmm. and the community is very helpful to us in terms of letting us do this uh-huh. and uh, I know we appreciate it a great deal and you could, people literally are here from all over the world awesome and are every year and uh, try to get yeah you, you, got, <laughs> you are being paged again yeah so, alright thank you for tuning hey, in um, we we'll hope to see you on our next episode God yeah. bless you should go in and just talk to folks and, you that's know, just, That's what I was going to do.